Hello everybody, welcome to Talkin' Tunes, the show where two guys sit around and BS about music. I'm Tony. I'm Kevin. And welcome to episode 5, where we're talking about Jamie's Elsewhere's album. Uh, man, that did not flow nice. Jamie's Elsewhere's album. Uh, we're talking about They Said a Storm Was Coming, a 2010 release by Jamie's Elsewhere. This one was 2010? I thought it, for some reason I felt like it was earlier than that. You know, I thought it was 2009, too, and I double-checked today, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. I didn't do, like, a ton of background research on uh, Jamie's Elsewhere, but I did send you that one message last week, because I was looking it up, and, like, they've got a bit of a rocky history. Yeah, they definitely from, seem to. Like, what, what I saw on their Wikipedia page, like, that, like the five minutes I looked at it before one of my classes. Right. I actually, I pulled that up today to reference it, um... And we we can get into that when we start to talk about the album. So before we before we get there, uh, what have you been listening to this week? This week, uh, a lot of a lot of you know Jamie's elsewhere. I listened to the set of storms coming, and also reimagined. I also went back and listened to a little bit of Rebel Revive just to kind of like you know compare it because that's the one I I like more. Yeah, I know you you know you don't think so, but I've also been listening to. Uh, the album I might recommend for next week, which we can get to later. Um, for some reason, that like came into mind. I'm listening to that probably more than I listen to James Elsewhere. Do you want to tell me what it is? No, we'll, we'll save okay. that for the, <laughs> all right, for the all right. And <laughs> it's it's a bit of a, a bit of a weird story, but I, I listen to a lot of Moulin Rouge. Yeah, I saw that on your Spotify, and I was actually going <laughs> to say something about it, but I decided not to. Yeah. I was talking to my friend Summer. And we were just, like, bullshitting about something. And she said something was like, oh, you know, uh, like, she's like, oh, I'm so jelly or something. And uh, for something that started getting me thinking about jelly, and then I'm like, what the hell is a marmalade, right? Like, what makes something a marmalade? And that made me think of the song Lady Marmalade from Moulin Rouge. I'm like, oh, that's a good song. I need to listen to it. So then I started listening to the whole thing, and I'm listening to that a lot this week. And now I want to watch the movie again, which I'm probably going to do tomorrow solid yeah it's a bit it's a real roundabout way to say you know jelly to moulin rouge i don't know that was what, what three steps that's not that bad yeah but you know i feel like it it just doesn't make sense in general i mean yeah it doesn't but that's fine <laughs> also i never got an answer what is a marmalade i don't i didn't i got distracted by moulin rouge and didn't look it up uh, I, I can't answer that question for you. I'm not a marmalade expert. I'm sorry. All right, episode one of Talking Jams next week confirmed. <laughs> I I have to ask, was this all a setup for that pun? It, it wasn't, but I'm glad right. it happened. That was this was real solid. <laughs> I, yeah, I long played listening to Moulin Rouge all week just so I can make <laughs> this one joke. The th- you you joke, but like I wouldn't put it past you. That's the thing. I don't have that kind of dedication. That's true. That's something I would, like, think about. Like, the, like episode two or something where I'm like, oh, I'm going to start doing, like, a bunch of AKAs for my name. And I still have the list of, like, 60 things, but I only ever did it that one time. Yeah. Mostly because you didn't laugh and I, I thought you would appreciate it, but it turns out you didn't. So that, that made me sad a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. I still have, like, the list of 60 things. Do you want to give me one now? Would that make you feel better? No. All right. It, it really wouldn't. Most of them are garbage, anyway. Gotcha. Uh, there's a couple of them I think are funny, but I'm I'm too lazy to dig through the list right now. All right. Anyway, what have you been listening to? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> I actually have been listening to a lot of Chunk No Captain Chunk for some reason. I don't know why. Really? Yeah. They came up on one of my, like, radio stations as I was, uh, just had it playing in the background. And I was like, you know, these guys are really good, and their new albums are pretty solid. I was pleasantly surprised. I feel like I haven't listened to a ton of their stuff. I know we saw them live, uh, Mm -hmm. when we went to go see a day to remember. That was, like, the only time I've ever listened to them in any, like, appreciable amount right other than like random one-offs every now and then from like 
Discover Weekly or that uh, All Star that Punk Goes Pop. Yeah, yes, that was them. They also had the um, We Are Who We Are on Punk Goes Pop, which they played live, which was really good. But that's the only thing I really knew oh, them for. Right, they did. And um, when they came on, I got uh. I've gotten a handful of songs from a couple of their new, newer albums, and they're they're good. I mean, it's kind of nice because Jamie's Elsewhere, and we'll talk about this obviously, but Jamie's Elsewhere's album is very heavy and very kind of exhausting to listen to. And uh, yes. Chung No Captain Chunk's stuff is way lighter. It, it was actually quite pleasant, so I use that as kind of a, a palate cleanser. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, that... Well, I mean, we'll get into it, but... Yeah, this this was a very, very heavy album. Yeah. How about we roll right into it right now? <clears throat> Let's do it. Alright. So, yeah. They Said a Storm Was Coming came out in 2010. Um, yeah, you're right about Jamie's Elsewhere's... Man, this is gonna get real hard to keep plural... Or, giving them, uh... An uh, oral history yeah, of yes. James Elsewhere. Yeah, you so need, well, like, a flow chart or something for this. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, All right, e- hold on. Edit in the video, just a flow chart of what happens to Jamie Elsewhere. All right, I'll see what just I can write, do. Right, right now. All right, there it is. Look at it, appreciate it. Pause the video, memorize it, love it, print it out. Sleep is under your pillow. All right, and it's gone now. I'm going to make you draw that. You make me draw? I'll do it. Dude, if you do it, I'll put it in, but I'm not doing it. All right, agreed. All right, cool. All right, <laughs> so, yes, we should really, we should leave it up, actually, while we talk about it, shouldn't we? <laughs> All right, and it's back now. All right, cool. So, we start with uh, Chris Patterson, Matt Scarpelli, Anthony Karioskia. I believe Nick Rodriguez, Mike Spearman, and Anthony Scarpelli. Then they release one album. They drop four out of those six members. Yeah, including like the two original guys. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you lose. They lose their drummer, their bassist, their uh, rhythm guitar, and their vocals, all after that album. So they replace those four guys. And have them for, like, a little over two years. And then they lose all of them, too. Um, but one, one thing I do want to point out is uh, they said a storm was coming. The vocalist is Aaron Pauly, who was, um, he moved over to Of Mice and Men and was actually with Of Mice and Men when we saw them. Really? Yes, he was a guitarist, I believe. The vocalist he, was a guitarist for Mice and Men? Yes. If you click on his picture, you might recognize him. Um, he he was not the screamer for Of Mice and Men. He did the uh, clean vocals. I thought they didn't really do a lot of clean vocals. Um. Oh, he's a he's a bassist. Uh, of Mice and Men? Yeah. yeah From they what did. I remember, they, they didn't do a lot of... They have... um. They're kind of in the background... But he, he plays... I'm sorry, he's not a guitarist. He, he played bass. Uh, or he plays bass for Of Mice and Men. So he, he plays bass and does clean vocals for them. Yeah. But he's on uh, the I Restoring Force and Cold, War, Cold World. Oh, I like Restoring Force. Restoring Force is a good album. Um, but yeah, I it kind of sucks that he left for Of Mice and Men, I think. Because I think he had a real good voice. Like, one of the things I think is really good about They Said a Storm Was Coming was the vocals. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not as high in them as I think you are. No? But, you know, we'll, we'll get into more specifics, but, you know, I think there there are moments where where they're really good, but there are also moments where I feel like they, they don't, like, fall, fall flat necessarily, but... They just kind of feel jumbled. If that I see makes what you're any saying. sense, like 
Because he's he's got a very like long drawn out voice. Like it's not a bad. He doesn't have a bad singing voice by any means. It's just sometimes when he's singing in that like long drawn out fashion, when he tries to like jam a whole bunch of words in, and the, the screamer does this too. I think I have it like in my notes in a couple of the songs. They like try to jam all these words into like a single like musical phrase, and it just like all sounds jumbled and like not clear. Right. I actually think he does the screaming too, as far as I can tell. Um, I have no reason to, con- or no way to confirm that, but looking at the uh, Wikipedia timeline, they don't have a specific, they only have vocals, they don't say anything about, uh, about, like, uh, screaming vocals and clean vocals. Normally they would split those up. So. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they do kind of sound a little similar, so I would totally believe if they were the same person. Yeah. So, that's Jamie's elsewhere in a nutshell, and they they ended up with they have five guys now. So, oh no, I'm sorry. No, they have four. they they broke up now. Oh, they broke up. Yeah, they they stopped, like they officially broke up in like 2015 or something. I missed that. My bad. Um, yeah, it's after uh, the section like right below that. And, uh, Justin Kyle and Jamie's elsewhere went on tour in 2014, but were unable to finish the tour due to various differences. Justin Kyle and James Elsewhere had not com- commented on the status until sem- September 3rd, 2015, when Justin Kyle announced on his Instagram that the band is officially broken up. Ah, gotcha. All right, so now they're gone. But they, they ended with four guys. So it, it's definitely a bumpy road for them. Yeah, and like between uh, They Said a Storm Was Coming and Rebel Revive, they had like almost an entirely new lineup anyway. Right. Do you think we could start a band and just call it Jamie's also and be like we're just continuing on the legacy? Because I, I mean, that's... like they 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 barely had anybody from the original thing anyway, so we'd be like, you know, they're not using it. Free press, right? I think that would get us sued. Who really cares, though? People who are getting sued. But we're not getting sued but we could get sued. All right, I think you're also missing on the fact that we don't play instruments well enough to start a band. So This whole thing <laughs> is a moot point. Yourself. Anyway. Yeah. When is the last time you touched your, your drum set? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> when is the last time? <laughs> My what? Yeah, <laughs> hmm? yeah no, I, I totally feel you. Uh, you're absolutely right. With that uh, casual knock at my musical ability, would you like to jump into the <laughs> album? I mean, where else would we go from here, right? Yeah. All right. So, They Said a Storm Was Coming starts off with the song Seasons. How do you feel about it as an opener, Kevin? Um, it sets the tone well. Uh, it starts heavy right out of the gate, and I feel like, you know, that the heaviness really continues for, I think, like, all but maybe one of the songs are super heavy like that. So I mean, it's a good tone setter uh, to begin with. Um, <clears throat> initially, when the song starts, I feel like I'm not a huge fan of the vocals. But like as the song kind of goes on, they grow on me a little bit more. I feel like that's that's a, like a general theme of the entire thing is at the beginning I don't necessarily like the vocals, but they grow on me. And then towards the end, you know, they tail off a little bit, but. You know, in general, they're they're solid. Gotcha. Yeah, I I agree with you that they start off kind of like, uh, um. I actually like the the start. I think I think it's a really nice like solid build up. Um. But it is really hard to sort of follow along with because they do this thing and they do this in most of the songs actually where the verses are screaming and the chorus is uh singing yeah and, that's, that's i'd say that's their standard setup yeah. maybe like half of a verse is sung in right. a couple of them but in general yeah and it's not like uncommon for uh heavier bands to do that but i do think it's hard to 
follow along with because it it's a lot of um there's a lot of heavy impact and drums and uh dirty guitar and there's not really like um like a central groove or like theme to latch onto, you know i think that yeah. makes it hard to follow with uh one thing i do think they do that's kind of cool although i think by the end of the album it gets overused is in the pre-chorus pre-chorus they use a lot of really cool synth stuff yes i actually made a note of that is yeah. like oh i like like the little like electronic synth stuff going on i think like towards the end i'm like all right it's starting to get a little overused now Right, they they end up doing it in almost every album. I have it. I seriously have pre-chorus synth every written song, as a note on how many out el- There's eleven. Yeah, probably like six out of the eleven. It's like, and it's it's a very similar riff each time. Oh no! And we're back after some minor technical difficulties. My internet cut out. So what are you gonna do? Um, Get better internet. Apparently, yeah. Let me just upgrade the whole building. Um, so, yeah. Basically, we agree the synth is gets overused. Um, one other thing that I actually did like about the ending of Seasons, though, is... Um, but, <laughs> this is going to sound dumb now. I was going to say <laughs> I like the ending of Seasons. Um, I think it's I think it's pretty good. Uh, compared to the rest of the song, I just think it's a nice, like, solid finish to it. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of the songs, to me, felt like they had, they had somewhat abrupt endings. N- not necessarily, like, abrupt, like, they just stopped and then went into the next one, but, like, they didn't have any, like, sustain, hold, or anything like that, and it's just, like, you yeah. know. You know, are... talking about uh, Children of Nova a couple weeks ago, we talked about how a lot of their songs like flow into each other, uh, safe except for like maybe one moment from like I think like Seasons to the Map Maker, it they always kind of stop and then start and then stop and start and nothing really kind of flows together. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. They they seem to always give an endpoint for most of them. I do have a couple notes on some other endings though that I thought. Uh... I had different thoughts about. Um, so, finishing seasons, that brings us to the map maker. Which, I actually, I think I'm a bigger fan of this one uh, than seasons. Yeah, I this one, had, I think, had a, a more solid beat, in my opinion. It got me, like, you know, foot tap and head bang and having a good time. Where, right. you know, seasons... Wow. Okay, I thought you were going to say something. But... Oh, my bad. I was going to say, I don't know if good time is the way to describe <laughs> this album, but yeah, I get what you're saying. It's a good time well, the I, same I, way I mean, that you know, Beartooth is a good time. Yeah, like, you know, a mosh pit can be a good time. Oh, yeah. But, as oh. you were saying. Uh, I, I just got sidetracked in my mind, because I, I, I saw a video of, uh, I think it was on I Prevail's facebook page apparently it's a thing they do at all their concerts where they like at one point have to do a wall of death dude the wall of death is so stupid it's such a bad idea it's so dumb like every time i see it i'm like this is dumb (laughs) i don't understand people who do that i also don't necessarily enjoy moss pits so i'm obviously not the target demographic for that kind of thing but yeah well, you know, we're getting up there in age. Our backs are starting to ache. You joke, but I actually think I do have a messed up back. My neck's been bothering me. Arthritis is acting up. My knee hurts every time it rains. Those damn kids won't get off my freaking lawn. And those lawn. damn kids on my... For real, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually, like, actually, for real. I have, like, an outdoor area outside my apartment, and, like... On Thursdays, people just like go out there and are loud and shit. And like, I have I have class on Friday, like in the morning. Do you yell out your window at them, dude? I'm totally gonna get you a cane for you to shake at them. I actually wouldn't hate that because I feel like that would help with my garbage back and knees. There you go. So if you wanna, you know, throw some some caneage my way, I'd be fine. 
Dude, I'll throw so much cane into your way. Just give me your cane. I will... I will give you all of my cane. Oh, I don't know if I can handle all of it. But... <laughs> so anyway, the map maker... <laughs> we have fun here. <laughs> um... I totally lost my thought. Oh, thank <laughs> God I took notes. Um... One thing that I think the map maker does do well is I think it showcases the singer really well. Yeah, I have, I have a note. Songs. I have a note here that it's like children of Nova style vocals mixed with a heavier sound because they've they both share that same long, uh, sustained like sing song. Not necessarily like the best way to describe it, but it's not like short and choppy. It's like smooth and connected. Right. But this is like certainly over a much heavier sound, like a Memphis Mayfire or a Bear Tooth sound. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it, I think. Um, and especially as long as we're talking about or comparing them to Children of Nova, I think the uh, uh, those like long notes they have at what I guess would be the bridge, where it's like, oh, oh, oh and uh, it goes on for like several bars. That's very a very children of Nova, yeah. Lick, yeah. I I, I have a note. I like the trippy vocals part. Yes. I I'm a huge fan of that part. I, I kind of wish they did stuff like that a little more because I think they do it well. Yeah, I th I think it's. It it works well on its own. But I think it also helps to break up the just like, all the heavy that's bashing your eardrums yeah you know it, that's one of the things i actually didn't notice about this album before um like i've never really sat down and listened to it as a full album i think i've only picked up bits and pieces of it from hearing it like you know in on pandora and then later spotify and all that stuff and i don't think i've ever sat down and listened to it and so when I was giving it the first listen through this week, I, I got to about the halfway point and I was like, man, I'm like actually mentally exhausted listening to this. <laughs> like it, there's nothing to break up the, uh, the flow at all. And it's not even, it's not even that it's all heavy necessarily. That's wrong. Cause like there are plenty of like bear tooth albums are both, pretty consistently heavy the whole time but they they change the feel a little bit and jamie's elsewhere has a very or at least in this album they they have a very specific sound and every song is that sound yeah i, I would definitely agree with that which i think also lends to the fact that like oh this sounds feels like it's getting overused and this thing sounds like it's getting a little overused too it's like they have their gimmicks and their tricks and their style and that's what like everything in this is like that except for like the prodigal i'd say which yeah. is like two minutes right so yeah that's map maker um do you have anything else to say about it uh, it's it's not a it's not a bad song. No, I think I, it's I, I, I think it's better than seasons. Yeah, it's it's up there. If I were to rank rank every song in the album from my favorite to least favorite, Matt Maker would be towards the top for sure. Yeah. And I think I think one of the reasons. Um, well, I'll I'll wait till the conclusion for that. I was gonna talk about the album as a whole, but I'll, I'll give it give it some more time. Um, next, after Map Maker, that brings us to They Said a Storm Was Coming. From the album, is, They Said a Storm Was Coming. A Storm Was Coming. <laughs> By the, the band, track. James Ellsworth. Yes. Um, what do you think about this one? Um, when I made my notes for this, because I, I, I feel like I listened to this, um, I did my, you know, weekly listening is a little bit different this week compared to the last couple where yeah. like i just like go through it once initially and like write my notes down right away and then maybe like if there's a little bit more time in the week i'll listen to it again 
I think I kind of did that in reverse this time, where like I just kind of like had it on in the background, and then like right before the bass, I like sat down and added notes. Okay. Um, and I I have a note that I like the electronic ish, you know that that synth intro, because I feel like listening to it, you know, just like, it, attently, attentively, in, in, whatever, listening to it, focusing on it. <laughs> um, it doesn't like at at this point because this was the first one where I feel like the electronics are like noticeable. So it, it's not like overused at this point, and it it works well. It, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Icy Stars. Yes, it does have a very Icy Stars feel to it. A lot of my notes are actually, this part reminds me of this other band, or this part reminds me of this. Yeah, I, feel like I, I, I have I compared, one later too. I, I compared a lot of what I heard from this one to like other other sounds from other bands. Yeah, I, I noticed myself doing that a lot uh, as well, just because we're starting to actually talk about all of it. So you think about it, it's like, oh, I remember hearing this this riff over here, you know, on this album. Yeah, I, I feel like the biggest comparison I made was between a lot of their intros reminded me of I Prevail from uh, Lifelines, where they've got like that like soft, like it sounds like it's far away in the background and then like, like slowly fades in and then it hits you. There's yeah. a couple of them where the intros are like that and they reminded me of uh, a lot of the intros off of Lifelines. Right. Because I Prevail does that in like every song. Yeah, definitely. Um, I agree with you on the the synth thing though. I I definitely this is the first song I noticed it on, and I think it works really well in this one. I actually like this song a lot. Um, and it's I think it's one of the first I heard uh, off this album. It was either this or One Foot in the Grave that I heard first off the album. I know they were the first two, and so I think I have a little bit of a disposition towards it. Um because of that but i I think it's got a good mix of the heavy screaming and singing and it changes up the feel a little bit throughout the song and so i I think i think it's a good uh a good balance that they hit in this one yeah this one definitely has of of the first three which you know isn't saying that much but (laughs) it's definitely the most balanced between you know, sing scream uh, but i think this is the first point where <clears throat> like i mentioned before some of the like words when you know the screaming sounds a little muddled this is like in some of the verses this is the first big instance where it all sounded a little muddled and like i i was listening to it and like reading along with the lyrics and like i would have never guessed what he was saying if i wasn't reading it right um, I think I know which part you're talking about too. It's like right after the, uh, right after the first chorus. It looks like. I don't. I don't have the lyrics open, but I think that's probably where it was. Yeah, I because I I noticed that on a couple of them. I I have been trying to like listen to stuff with the lyrics and see if I can pick up on anything interesting, and they do have a big problem with that when they're screaming. And it, it's. It's sort of not that noticeable when you just have the songs in the background. But when you are actually trying to listen to it and follow along, it it's very obvious that they are either stretching out a word to be way too long or or shoving it into like two beats. Like shoving an entire sentence into like two beats and it's just I wish they wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the the whole point of that is like trying to fit I think it's just trying to fit a lyric to a phrase instead of like trying to fit a phrase to a lyric. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. And not necessarily that it's there. There's only like a few instances where it's very prevalent that you know they're like just jamming in words. Um, yeah, it's not like it's it's constantly in every line. No, no, not but, at all. You know, it, it's something that you that you might notice. Yes. Um. All right. So 
that brings us to Giants Among Common Men. I think this might have been the first one I heard. Because I've heard bits and pieces of the album you know, through different mediums or whatever. I think this might have been the first one I heard off of this album. Yeah. Or it might have been um, the pairing of this song with the the song from Reimagine that's similar to this one. Let's pretend we're giants. Yeah, that that might have been the first one I heard, and then I think I remember like on our long Florida trip we made. It's like the first time where you're like, oh, Jamie's also has these two albums that are like linked together. I'm like, oh, I've heard some of that. Yeah. And like that's like where it, you know the connection is made. Right. We we skipped over it with the map maker, but the map maker uh, pairs up with the first song on Reimagined, and um, I think I think it's an interesting concept for an album. I actually like that they did it. I like that they have a couple of these songs, um, in sort of a softer context. Um, I kind of wish they did it with more of them, and maybe put them into the album, but uh, the Giants Among Common Men one which on reimagined is let's pretend, let's pretend we're giants i think is really awesome i actually like both versions of the song a lot yeah i i say in general when there was you know two songs that or a song that crossed both albums i'd say in general i liked them both um this one i wouldn't say it was my favorite from reimagined but it it's good to hear in a softer setting yeah. As are, I, I agree with you that I would have liked to, to have heard more of this, more songs of this in like a softer, more acoustic. I, I wouldn't call it's not acoustic. An acoustic. No. It's like I don't know exactly how you would describe it. It's just like less heavy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's necessarily a word for that. It's. This might be wrong, but it's almost instead of just like a regular like screamo song, it's almost done like a rock ballad, maybe. Like the Giants Among Common Men one, I think. Yeah, that's definitely closer than acoustic. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the right way to describe, but it's, but it's definitely closer than calling it acoustic. Yes, I I, I actually. When I said it was acoustic, I genuinely... I was actually thinking of, like, one specific song off the album. And then I started listening to it. I was like, oh, man, Kevin's going to call me on this. Because <laughs> it I, is I, not acoustic. Yeah, I, I, I considered it. But I had also heard, you know, some of the songs off that. So I knew it wasn't, you know, straight-up acoustic. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, this song is another one that I have that synth marked down. Um, so that's already three out of four that have like the same synth riff and it's always a very similar riff that they use with it is it's like yeah it's just it's just like runs yeah and it's cool but they overuse it so much on this album uh yeah i didn't have the the synth noted here but i think it's because it's only like the second time it's happened so i'm like i you know i guess if they use it again it's fine Mm mm-hmm like it's not quite at the point where it's like okay they've used this in almost every song but it, it's it's at that point where for me at least it it clicked it was like wait a second <laughs> um, yeah and i think this might have been because I'm, I'm less familiar with it that it didn't click right mm-hmm. away yeah i've listened to these songs a lot so um one thing i uh, i also really like on this song though is um i think it has some nice harms at the beginning of it uh, and I don't really know how they did that. I don't know if it's Aaron just harming on himself, like on a different track. Like rec- recorded different tracks? Yeah, or if someone in the band does back backup vocals. Um, Wikipedia doesn't say they do, so who knows. But uh, I, I, think they're, I think they're really nice. I feel like it's Aaron's voice, though, that's doing the harmonies. I don't think I listened to it closely enough to be able to pick up the harms that much. I also just They're pretty soft. Yeah, I also just don't really have an ear for harms. Gotcha. I've been trying to listen to them more cuz I think they're really interesting. But 
Yeah, but I mean that that's why anytime like we're together and we sing songs with the half harms in them, you always take the harms because I just can't sing them because I don't know them. Yeah. The worst is when you're not really sure what the harm is, so you guess and you miss it real bad. <laughs> oh yeah, because that you know, being being a harmony, it's in the background, so Yeah. It's real obvious when you miss it though. So I, I know there have been several times where I've been in the car with people and uh like singing along to a song and i'll be like oh i'm gonna sing the harmony and then i go for the note and like everyone just turns and looks at me <laughs> like i'm an idiot yeah harms like, are in the background because they fit in yes um yeah so overall i like what uh giants of uncommon men and let's pretend we're giants on reimagined i think they're they're both done well yeah both solid not not standouts, but solid. Yeah. Um, moving on to track five, one foot in the grave. This one, this one really stuck in my mind for some reason. And looking at the lyrics, like if you pull up the lyrics, I think it's because there's a lot of repetition lyrically in it. Uh, at least from the the lyrics site that I looked at, it, like you look at it and it looks like there's like maybe a dozen different lines for like a three minute song and a lot yeah. of it's just repeated over and over again i think right. that might be one of the reasons that it's stuck in my head but there's also a lot more to it than just the the repetition like mm-hmm. it's got it, it's still at that point in the album where a lot of the the gimmicks that jimmy's also does haven't like been exposed as gimmicks so I think right. maybe going going back, I wouldn't necessarily like it as much. Like, if this song was towards the end of the album, I may not like it as much. But I think the spot it's at really lends itself to being a better song. Yeah. One of the things that I think is actually really nice is, in this song, they actually do, uh, instead of just, like, blatant, like, guitar strumming, or just flat, like, heavy, dirty... Uh, uh, chords they finally do some like actual picking you know and i think that helps a lot um it's it's like slow picking it's not just you know uh not they're not shredding but i i think it gives it a really nice tone change because it goes from this like every song starts so heavy and one foot in the grave finally starts like light and um then the uh, chorus actually gets really heavy and so they they switch it around which i think is really nice to hear because it, it like at this point in the album every song has been uh either a build-up or just straight into like double bass crash cymbals and screaming yeah i have the the beginning described as a tense lyrical sound where it's not necessarily like it sounds like it's like a build-up tone, but in like a lyrical music, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Good, because I couldn't explain it better. No, I, th- I, I think I think I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, it's like it's not. It's not like chorusy, like the prodigal is, where it's like you know, a little bit more like swear swear high sway your head and throw your armor on somebody and you know, like listen to this ballad but it's not you know headbang either right and i this one i actually really like just because i think the i, I guess what i would call the chorus is i think it's cool um and like i think it's a very emotional song which you know i'm i'm all for um and and just the change in tone which I'm, i've already said like several several times but it helps so much <laughs> cuz the album desperately needs that to break it up yeah it it, it could have used a lot more of it mhm what do i you also think? Oh. i was just going to say i i like the again this is another one of the gimmicks i feel like um being early enough that it's okay um, that the thing they do with the guitar, I don't know if there's a word for it, but when they go, it's like, 
where like it goes like between that low and that high they like oh yeah does that like jump thing they do it in the course of this one and i'm like oh that sounds really good and i noticed it again and again and again and again like in so many songs but i think in, in this one again like a lot of the other things being where it's at it doesn't sound overused at that point yeah i i would agree with that i actually um i actually didn't write down that as a gimmick but you're totally right that they do that uh guitar thing every time or not every time but in a lot of the songs do have that um what i was gonna say was uh what do you think of the the reimagined version of this song one foot in the present day yes um I feel like I probably should have listened to Reimagine a bit more closely. <laughs> uh, sorry, I ran out of time over like, this whole week. No, it's, that's fine. Um, I think One Foot in the Present Day might have been the one that like was on my was in my uh, like library already because it came up on a Discovery Weekly or something. Gotcha. So I must have liked it at some point because I, I liked it enough to save it to my library. Yeah. I really I really like the reimagined version as well. This is another pair that I think is really well done. I think the heavy version is awesome and um the the reimagined version is really good. But I actually think I like the reimagined version a little better. Yeah, yeah. thinking about the lyrics, it makes you wonder a little bit if they had the idea of making lighter versions of these songs or if they just kind of like happen to work out that way right because like a lot of the lyrics are like like some of the main lyrics in this one is one foot in the present day one foot in the grave like they say that a bunch of times so i wonder if like they had it somewhere in the back of their minds that like that like two separate lyrics could be two separate songs right and still connected this this is what i wish uh, the two albums were more of because you have that the heavy version is one foot in the grave which is like very dark and intimidating and awful and it sounds kind of like hopeless and you know it, it gives you that like sort of sense of dread might be a little too <laughs> too much to describe it but it, it gives you that that mental state whereas one foot in the present day sounds more like hopeful and not upbeat necessarily but uh it has a more positive connotation to it which i think is so cool and i wish they played with it more between the two albums because um giants among common men they do a similar thing and the map maker they do a similar thing and i'm like this is awesome and then they stop (laughs) entirely they they don't do any of the others after prodigal and I, I think it's such a missed opportunity because I think it would have been so cool if they did something like a slave, a son, you could have named the heavy one, a slave, and then a light one, a son. And then you would have had that cool, like dichotomy going through the entire set of albums. And they don't, they don't quite do it as much. Cause when I first found reimagined one foot in the present day was the first song I heard off of it. And I was like, Oh my God, these guys are brilliant. And then I listened to the album and I was like, damn it. I They're not they as smart playing. as I thought they were. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was, I was a little bummed about that. But, you know, what are you going to do? Um, also, we got to pick up the pace a little bit because we're already at 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that. Uh, just one more, one more thing to say about that. Yeah. I wonder if the reason they didn't do more with Reimagined is because of the band issues. That's very possible. It's just something that I, I just like pop in my head. Maybe maybe they wanted to do more of it, but they just couldn't because they couldn't agree. Yeah, it's, it's certainly possible. Or maybe they, it's just not what they had in mind in the first place. Yeah, and I did, they didn't want to feel like they were forcing it. Right. It, it definitely could come off pretty hokey if you, uh, if you did it wrong. Yeah, definitely. All right, uh, moving on and talking faster because we've already used up three quarters of our time uh we finally get to the middle of the album the prodigal which the the first time where i feel like there's this is like an interlude like the entire Mm -hmm. thing is an interlude 
Yeah. It's the reimagined sound on this album. Right. Which is weird because they have a reimagined version of it, and they're not that different. Yeah, that that one didn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know why you would choose this one. Right, I was a little bummed about that too. Like, there's there was no need for them to do that necessarily. Yeah, which, you know, again, might be like, why would they stop here and just like entirely ignore the second half? It could be band issues or something that like, we don't even really know about. Yeah. And it is the only slow song on the album, which I, I kind of, I'm glad it's there. Cause if, if it was another heavy song, I think I would just like, I'd be so done with the album by the end, but it's definitely not, um, it's not one of my favorites. I don't, I don't think it's a great interlude necessarily. No, it's, it's not great as an interlude, but it's better in the context of it's a, it's a nice break. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on to song seven, Visions and Sleep. Uh, which is an awesome name, by the way. I just, I just really like that name for a song. It's, it's a good, it's a good song name. Um, I, I wrote in my notes heavy as fuck again, because <laughs> I, I got here. I was like, oh, here we go, strap in. Um, I actually really like the chorus on this one though. Yeah, I don't have anything about the chorus, but I again have the beginning reminds me of I Prevail. The first verse, for some reason, reminded me of Memphis May Fire. Yes, I totally have that written down. Especially because it, it's got that, like, um, even more so at the um, the bridge, right before they start screaming, Why Have I Strayed? They got that ban, and, 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 that is such a, such a Memphis May Fire riff. Yeah, I mean, I'm, good thing I wasn't the only one that thought that. I'm so happy you did. Um, <laughs> you know, I heard it. I heard this song in the car at one point um, before I had really started listening to Jamie's Elsewhere, and I, I seriously thought it was a a song off of like an early Memphis May Fire album. And I, I checked my phone to see because I was like, this has to be. Oh no, interesting. So I, I just always every time I get to that part, I, I think about. Uh, Memphis Mayfire's earlier stuff. Yeah. One thing I, I wish that they would have utilized more was... Because the singer's got a... Like, he does a lot of sustained stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I wish they would have done a lot of more of, like, they're, like, all oh, really heavy, really heavy, and, like, he starts holding a note, and all of a sudden, they just, like, drop the heavy, like, guitar sounds. Yeah. And, like, they just drop out, and then, like, maybe have like one or two lines and then just like bring it back because that would be like a mini juxtaposition it would be like a mini the prodigal in a song which i feel like would have helped a lot of them not just sound like three minutes of screaming in your ears yeah i think i think that would would have helped yes (laughs) It, it definitely i don't know like even even the visions in sleep break before the screaming like where they do that riff i think is such a helpful uh helpful pause because it's it's pretty much just the guitar you don't have like super heavy bass and double bass on the drums with just straight like crash cymbals and snare it's it it helps so much to have that uh that change in the tone right um and one one last note about this song because I I listen to the ending and I hate that it fades out. <laughs> like it it keeps um they keep playing the same riff but it fades out as it goes and I hate when songs do that because it sounds like it should be on the radio and I just feel like on an album like just finish your song you know you have all the time in the world to do it. Yeah, that that, that is a a very radio move to do. Yeah, like I understand when the radio fades out songs so that you don't listen to their two minute like outro of them singing the last line of the chorus eight times. But like you you can do that here, <laughs> you know, so I, I was a little annoyed that they didn't they didn't use it to flow into wolves. They didn't use it to like wrap up the song. It just it just fades. And that bothered me a little bit. Yeah, I would be more OK with it if it fed into wolves. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, but Wolves starts just like, like I, I I actually went back and listened to it a couple times. The start of Wolves, it's just like starts. There's just like two short base kick, like two short base drum kicks, and then it like goes. Yeah. Which I think is, it's it's weird coming out of the ending of, uh, Visions and Sleep, where it's like you know it is it like fades out and all of a sudden it just like hits you in the face. Right. Which I think we would be saying is a really cool thing to do if the rest of the album didn't feel like it was beating you in the face the entire time. Right. And I, and I know I said, like, I wish that they would have used a more, like, they, like, drop the heaviness. But the the reason they drop the heaviness is because they have the vocals bridging the two. This is more like... Like, imagine... I'm, I'm going to take you on a little journey here. Imagine, like... A, like a canyon, right? It okay. goes down, like, you know, the walls slant a little bit and it goes down and it slants back up real fast, right? Yeah. You can build a bridge over that and you can walk on the bridge or you could, you know, walk down the canyon and walk back up again. I feel like if you just drop the heavies, leave a vocal, you're, like, going over that bridge where the two sides are connected. Mm-hmm. But the Visions and Sleep to Wolves is, like, you're walking down the canyon where you go from one side to another. You're not, like connected necessarily it's more like you're rocketing down the cannon and then you rocket back up the other side but yeah Yeah, during a landslide exactly um yeah it's very odd because i I noticed myself at this point i was like man this is this is starting to get to be too much um also one of the things that i think is almost really cool in wolves but never doesn't quite work is um did you notice that the verses are in a triple or a double meter and the, yes and the chorus is in a triple meter right yes i have There's... something i have i like the feel of the chorus parentheses swing not the best way to describe it but that's the feel yeah it's a triple feel it's a triple meter um it's like six eight and yes six eight right i was and... i was doing the counting trying to figure out ex- what exact meter it was yeah that's exactly what they're doing they're switching from like four four to six eight and it's an awesome feeling except that they don't transition at all. They they pretty much stop playing and then go into the triple meter. And it kind of bothers me because I feel like there are some really cool ways they could have done it, but um, every time they come up to the chorus, there's sort of like a a stop. It's like, do, 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 da na 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 And I kind of, it, it doesn't feel like, they're transitioning it feels like they had to stop because they couldn't transition you yeah, know they couldn't think of a way to smoothly go from two to three yeah and i i mean there are other ways to do it do you know you like have the drummer kick in like a triplet fill that flows into the six eight and then you use that as your new um as your new time Feel. breakdown we used to do that in marching band all the time the drum line would use that and um it just, it just feels like they didn't have a way to transition it, but they wanted to do that, and I wish it flowed better. And, um, yeah, it, it just feels too too much, too jerky between the two. It doesn't feel like there's a smooth link. Yeah, I, di- I didn't necessarily notice the, the break, but I, I noticed there was a definite feel change, or a mm-hmm. meter change. Yeah, I, I actually really like the triplet meter in the chorus i just wish they transitioned to it better yeah yeah i I would have to go back and listen to it again but yeah i agree with you on that yeah um moving on from wolves we have a slave a son which uh go ahead go ahead oh (laughs) okay um i i think this one they actually have a lot of good changes in the feel in the song. I think this is another song that they actually balanced really well. I think, um, let me pull up the lyrics and make sure I'm, uh, in the right spot. So I, I feel like finally they have, um, like a good mix of singing and then they have like that really heavy driving pre-chorus and then, um, the chorus brings it up and the, the vocals are really solid there. It, it feels like there's a really nice flow to the whole song. Yeah, I have I have a note that the scream and sing merge sound. 
like instead of being like such separate entities like they were in the previous songs they they do kind of merge tonally and style wise because even the, the screaming becomes you know a little bit more long and drawn out and mm-hmm. the vocals become a little bit less long and drawn out so they kind of start meaning towards a middle which i feel like was a good a good like way i don't know I don't know, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought, but it's like a good, a good thing to do is to, to yes. merge the two. Yeah, I, I prefer when they they complement each other a little more, and this is one of the songs that does it really well because a lot of the other songs it's very disjoint, and one of the reasons that might be is if it is just one guy doing both the singing and the screaming, that would definitely be a cause of it. Because let's face it, it's not like you can do both at the same time necessarily. Um, yeah, unless you're Maddie Mullins. Exactly. And I, I think, I, I don't know uh, if they did something differently here or if it's just the way the song's written, but you're right. It, it definitely puts them together better. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily the way it was written, but it's more the way it was performed. Possibly, yeah. Well, I, I'm sure the writing has something to do with it, but the way it's performed... Because I'm sure you could easily do it like they had done it all before, where everything sounds so separate. But the the singer performed it in a way where the two sounds merged. Yeah. Um. All right. Trying to trying to get us to the end here. Um. The Lighthouse track ten. Um. I think it's one of the only songs on the album that's actually in a major key. I'm pretty sure. I would I not be able sure. to dispute dispute you on that. I, I don't know for sure. I mean, I'm a drummer, so <laughs> don't don't pull out the pitchforks if that's incorrect. But um, I, I'm pretty sure it is. And I think this one, they actually have sort of a consistent guitar riff throughout the song, which I think is quite nice. Because <laughs> um, I think a lot of other songs don't. Yeah, I yeah, I, I think the the consistency works well. Right. This one also has that that synth intro that synth intro again. Yep. Every time, man. I have a note that's like, all right, enough already. <laughs> yeah. We get it. You have a synth. Yeah. It, it it this is definitely the point where it's like, okay, come on, um. Overall, though, I actually I actually like this song too. This is this is one I'd I'd put on the upper end of the rankings. I think. Yeah, I would, I would do, I would agree with that. One one thing I don't like about it though, and this is just really me being nitpicky and the things I personally like or don't like, is the the scream fade at the end where it like it screams and like fades into that like electronic sound. Mm-hmm. I I really like that transition, but like the length of time that it goes on is a bit excessive well and it doesn't actually transition into the last song it it fades out entirely and the, also that yeah and then the next song starts because i uh i actually made a note about that it said you have this really long outro it, it never goes into the next thing yeah. which is a little uh, frustrating yeah that's i hate when bands do that yeah well and especially they have so many songs that end with an outro and so many songs that start with like that a build-up intro why don't they like why couldn't they combine any of them you know yeah i think there's like one or two one maybe two times where that happens yeah um and then so after the electronic fade out we jump into an antithesis which appropriately is heavy as fog love the intro to this song yes it reminds me a lot of, I didn't have time to look it up, but that Bullet for My Valentine song. Oh, um. Oh, crap. I can only think of it as the cat song. I couldn't remember the actual name of it. Dig a dig a dig a dig a dun. Dig a dig a dun. Dig a dig a dun. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Go ahead and talk about this song. I'll think about it. Uh, I was just gonna look. I was hoping you would do it so I could look it up. Yeah, Your okay, betrayal. I'll talk about it. So, um, Your betrayal was the song I'm thinking of. Yes, thank you. 
the intro to that song. Yes, I know why you were thinking of the cat thing, because <laughs> of because <laughs> of good, or rock band. Yeah. Dumb inside jokes. Yeah, basically, those are always good for a podcast, right? Of course. Um, so one of the things I wrote down um, after the heaviness of it, I, I do like the the intro here. I think it's really cool. Um, but one thing that bugs me is this is where I actually wrote down that the lyrical rhythm is really weird because in this one they do the opposite of what you were complaining about earlier. Instead of squishing everything into one, they they stretch out a bunch of the words out and then cut them up at weird places. Like there's phrases that end in the middle of a word. I did notice that it's it's especially more it's a lot more prevalent when you're listening to it and looking at the lyrics. Yeah, it's like why I, did they just randomly stop in the middle of this word? Yeah, admittedly I didn't notice it until I I listened to the song with the words, but it's like really obvious and I feel like there were other ways to make the words flow is what annoys me. It's like it feels like this this phrase fits in or this lyrical phrase fits into this musical phrase but you cut it up in half for like no apparent reason yeah uh you know i'm not you know a rock star so i don't, I don't yeah, I mean, know how to yeah. fix that but right <laughs> sorry how many albums have we sold um uh, i can sell you four episodes of a podcast hey nice got him um yeah it's it's definitely one of those things that caught me off guard. When you don't have the lyrics in front of you, though, it's it's not so bad. Yeah, but the damn minute and a half water flowing outro. Yeah, it always makes me need to pee. It's just, I get what they're going for. Like, they said a storm was coming. Water, beach, storm. Okay, you don't need to shove it down my throat for a minute and a half. Yeah, it was it was a little too too long for me even, and and I, this is coming from the person who was complaining about the fade out earlier, like oh just wrap up your song, you have all the time you want, but like the song wraps up and then it's just whoosh, whoosh, yeah, and like kind of a, a cello. I almost wish they just put it on a separate track, like they could have just had an outro track, you know. Um, yeah, that that would be a good way to do it, I think. One thing I do like about the song a lot, though, is um, right before they get to the I never wanted what I couldn't pay back part, they have the, oh, wow, and the guitar does, like, the slide, you know? I love yeah. that that build into it. I'm a big fan of slides in, slides are in heavy dope. song, or in, yes. uh, like, metal. Yeah. Especially when they're, like, exposed and, like, you know, oh, shit, something's about to happen. Yeah, for sure. It's such a nice way to like bring it into uh, the next phrase or a breakdown. Um, also, this one has the synth during the bridge again. The synth runs. Well, that's that's just implied at this point. Common common theme. Yeah, it's that's that's how they wrap up the album. I, I think it's a, a decent song to end on. I wish it didn't have the super long water outro at the end. Yeah. I have it as a strong ending, minus the outro. Yeah. For sure. So that wraps up the album. We don't have time to talk about the other songs on Reimagined, but uh, overall, I actually I actually really like the last, like, two songs. Or, not the last two. Because the, the unreleased secret track or whatever, I think is actually trash. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, 90% of the lyrics is just them, you know, like, something about you being beautiful. Yeah, that that one I hate. Um, let me check. Uh, heavy eyelids, heavy heart, I like a lot, and out of love, I really like. Yeah, out of love is good. Yeah. Um, but the the secret track is garbage. <laughs> it's it's not good. Yeah, I well, think there was a reason like, it was unreleased. Yeah, it, it sounds like um, an issues song almost, but not like like they didn't commit to it it's very weird i don't i don't know how I, well i do know how i feel about it i think it's trash i think i made that pretty clear <laughs> it, it was something i yeah, had, i had somehow never is. heard that one i i was going through the album today before checking that i like knew what each song was and taking my notes and i got to that one and i was like there's a secret track oh god why <laughs> you get all excited to me like this didn't need to happen 
Yeah, basically. Um, so yeah, that's that's they said a storm was coming. Overall, Kevin, what are your what are your thoughts on it? Um, solid, heavy, could have used less heavy. Seven point eight out of ten. Too much water. <laughs> um, yeah, my my final thought on it. Uh, the conclusion I've come to basically at the end of this week is it's a good album um, if you don't listen to it as an album like individually I actually like the songs if they come on in a shuffle on my pl- on a playlist I I will jam out to them but if they um, if they just st- I can't listen to the whole thing. I, I I think the album just does not make a very cohesive uh, sound, <laughs> or maybe it is a cohesive sound. And it's just it's just too it's just too heavy. Monet- yeah, I just wish I wish it had more of a flow. I, I wish it was going somewhere, which is ironic since we complained about the abundance of water in it. Yeah, but you know. Well, we're not professionals here. No, of course not. I, I f- actually feel, like, really weird, because most of our episodes have been us, like, gushing over whatever album we're talking about. I think this is the first time we've both been like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot they could have done differently. Yeah, and it's not it's not a total miss. I still prefer Rebel Revive. I, I actually need to go listen to that and see how I feel about it now that I've listened to They Said a Storm Was Coming, uh, like, intently. Um, cause I'm curious to see how Rebel Revive holds up as a full album, but either way, not, not a bad thing to have in your library if it's going to get popped on occasionally. Yeah. Definitely a song where you put the, uh, definitely an album where you put the songs in a playlist, but not the entire album on the playlist. Exactly. Pick your favorites, stick to your favorites. Yes, for sure. Uh, speaking of favorites, what what would you pick as your one favorite from the album? It would be Antithesis if that minute and a half long outro wasn't there. <laughs> um, if I had to pick one, it probably probably would be One Foot in the Grave. I gotcha. Just I think just still going back to the point where all the things I liked about it are the gimmicks that didn't get exposed as gimmicks yet. Right. So if I, I'm sure if I let's do it again, I'd probably come up with something different, but I'm going to stick with one foot in the grave for right now. Sounds good. Um, I was going to say, mine is definitely between one foot in the grave and visions in sleep. And probably, probably leaning towards one foot in the grave, if I'm being honest. Well, they copy me. Have you no, original thought, for God's sake? I know, I'm, I'm actual literal trash. Pretty much. Yeah. Because Visions in Sleep has that Memphis May Fire riff that I love a lot, but it still has a couple things about it that just don't really work for me. Whereas One Foot in the Grave, I think, is very, like, consistent. Right. Sweet. So that's, that's that. That is that so looking forward to next week kevin yes next week how familiar are you with the band boys of fall i am not but i've i'm not at all familiar with them excellent their song their album thank you and goodbye that is my recommendation for next week thank you and goodbye their only album i believe so all right cool um all right this one reminded me a lot of um homesick oh it's got a lot of homesick feels to it where it's got heavy but it's got a lot of light and if this has what they said a storm was coming needed which is the breaks and the flow changes and the tone changes Mm -hmm. which reminded me a lot of homesick that's that's making some big promises, Kevin. I, I'm I'm not saying it's as good as Homesick. Okay. <laughs> but it reminded me of Homesick. I'm just giving you crap. I'm sure it'll be good. 
Um, and it'll be exciting to listen to something that I haven't listened to at all. Because so far I've been familiar with all of our stuff, so. And I, I've been somewhat familiar with pretty much everything, so. Yeah. I'm excited. Well, this'll... I'm excited to know what you think about it. Yeah, this will be a nice change in the uh, dynamic. Sweet. All right. On that note, thank you so much for listening, guys. Uh, hope to see you next week. Have a good weekend. And I fucked up the outro. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> see it. Peace.